Hello, friend. Welcome back to the Hollywood Hacking Analysis series, featuring my favorite TV show Mr. Robot. In the first two episodes, we analyzed how a black hat hacker from the show named Elliot, hacked a digitally secured prison facility before midnight, and intercepted FBI phone calls using a device called Femtocell. Today, we'll delve into another hacking scene from the show, where Elliot's sister Darling, who is also a skilled black hat hacker, attempts to hack a car using her laptop and tries to steal it without a key, so let's get started. Disclaimer! This video is intended for cybersecurity enthusiasts and is for edutainment purposes only. Hacking someone or something without permission is highly discouraged and it is both unethical and illegal. Step number one, unlocking the car doors. Okay so in season 4 episode 4 of the series, Darlene, after attempting to contact Elliot numerous times, sensed that something was wrong, and decided to visit his apartment. Upon arriving, she found a strange note saying, They are listening, and unexpectedly received a text message from her brother containing a remote location without any context. This location appeared to be somewhere deep within the woods, and in order to get there, she needed transportation. Given that it was Christmas night, and finding a taxi was unlikely, she decided to hack a car and steal it. Now typically when a hacker attempts to hack a car in order to steal it, their first step is to get the car doors unlocked and gain access inside the car. There are several methods of doing this, but the most traditional ones involve performing a relay attack or a jamming attack on a car with a keyless entry system. In a relay attack, a hacker positions themselves near the targeted vehicle, and waits for the owner to use the car's remote in order to unlock it. Once the owner presses the unlock button, the hacker captures the SDR signals transmitted between the car's door and the key fob using a device like RTL-SDR, in conjunction with a software like HDSDR. After successfully capturing the signals, they employ various methods to duplicate replicate or decrypt the exchanged keys, and once done, they then transmit these manipulated keys using a device like HackRF1, to unlock the car doors. In a jamming attack, the hacker focuses on blocking or disrupting communication between the car and the key fob using a signal jammer, causing the car to remain unlocked, while making the owner believe it to be securely locked. But as Darlene was in a hurry, and couldn't perform both of these sophisticated attacks, she found a slightly older car from the early 2000s that had a manual locking system, and used a specially crafted copper wire with a hook to pull up the door's lock and unlock it. Step number two, connecting to the controller area network. Once the car's door was unlocked and she was inside, we can then see her turning on her laptop running Kali Linux, a Linux distribution specifically designed for hackers, and then connecting her laptop to the car's integrated computer system using a diagnostic port under the dashboard known as an ODB2 port. These ports are built into nearly every vehicle, and are used by car mechanics or technicians to access the car's controller area network or CAN, and identify potential issues with the car's engine or other components. A hacker can connect their device with this port using an inexpensive device such as this one, and do things like cluster manipulation or starting the engine without a key, by installing a software called CanUtilis on their laptop. Utilis is basically an open source project for Linux, that contains various utilities for allowing a computer to communicate with the controller area network of a car. We can also see Darlene running a utility called CanSniffer from the same CanUtilis software in the next scene. CanSniffer is used for monitoring the car's network traffic, so it's possible that she used this utility for sniffing and filtering specific packets that are responsible for things like igniting the engine. However before she could proceed with the attack, she was interrupted by the car's owner and failed, but if she wasn't interrupted, the next step would be reverse engineering the gathered packets, and then using those packets through another utility called Consent to start the car. Anyway guys that wraps it up for today, now before I conclude the video here, I want to emphasize that while the hacking scenes depicted in Mr. Robot are technically accurate and totally doable in real life, they may still overlook the complexity complexities faced by hackers in real world. Hacking isn't as straightforward as going for a walk and easily accessing any vehicle with a laptop, as it requires a plan and thorough research on the targeted vehicle, while keeping other factors in mind. If you're interested in a more in-depth video about various ways hackers can breach vehicles, and the potential threat models modern electric cars might pose in the upcoming years, let me know in the comments section down below and I'll see you in the next one.